And we turn to Cuba now, an island just 90 miles away from the United States, where there have been new protests since hundreds took to the streets on Sunday. Videos show people chanting power and food and homeland and life, patria y vida, a call for freedom. Joining us now, Amalia Dache, an associate professor at the University of Pennsylvania's Graduate School of Education. Professor, thank you for being with us this morning. Why are these happening? Are these protests happening? Cubans have been protesting and have been in resistance since the communist regime took power in 1959 till now. But what has most recently happened is that since July 21st, since July 11th, 2021, Cubans have taken to the streets in mass publicly and they have continued. And we have seen the biggest um, expressions of this this weekend, although there have been activism and there has been protests having to do with their hunger. Their hunger is pushing them to continue to challenge their government system, their regime system that state controls and also rations electricity and rations food. So Cubans are hungry. Cubans are uncomfortable because these electric uh, power outages from the state is making, are gonna make, is gonna make their lives unbearable uh, this summer. And we are seeing expressions of that uh, in Santiago and also in the central part of Cuba. Yeah, and, you know, millions of Cubans have left the island since 1959, when, as you point out, Castro took power. That same regime is still in power today. Between October of 2022 and January of 2024, more than half a million people have left Cuba and come to the United States. Why is that? Cubans are seeking freedom to work, freedom to think, freedom to have... Um, their racial identities and ethnic identities be understood, their culture. You know, since Fidel Castro took power and the Castro brothers have taken power, Afro-Cubans have not been able to fully practice their religions. They could not fully express their ancestral knowledge. And so when we think about the stripping of black history in our own country, Afro-Cubans have been stripped of their history, have been stripped of their black leaders, intellectual leaders like Juan Guarberto Gomez, who Cubans don't even know because those topics have been stripped from communist doctrine that has been pushed down on Cuba for decades. This is what they're this is what they want when they come to the United States, when they come to countries in Europe. They want freedom. They want freedom to think and be and be fully human. Is there a racial component to the Cuban reality? Absolutely. Afro-Cubans are part of the society that lives in the poorest parts of the society. They're the ones that receive the least amount of remissions. They're the ones that are in prison at higher rates. Again, drawing parallels to other countries that have that that are because Cuba is a post-democratic country. Now, Cuba had democracy from 1902 till 1959. And so they know what democracy is. They know what that feels like. They know what having civil rights feels like. Although it was flawed and it wasn't perfect, just like all democracies, Cubans know that that is what they want. That is what the ancestors have, and that is what they want right now. And absolutely, it's and a civil rights issue. This is a civil rights issue, Jose. This is literally probably very close to what the civil rights movement was in the 1950s and early 60s. This is what we're experiencing in Cuba right now. Is there any future, you think, for that opposition or that movement in a country that that regime is really well versed at squashing and destroying opposition? Absolutely. We can look at we can look at Germany. We can look at the post-communist countries. We can look and remember what happened before the fall of the Berlin Wall, the protests that took place in Leipzig that were overshadowed by the Berlin protests. So these protests are going to take more than a month to kind of surface and actually change. It may take several months, it may take a year, it may take more than a year, but protest, internal pressure does matter. Economic sanctions do matter. And we know this from the post-communist model in, in Europe. Amalia Dacia, thank you so much for being with us this morning. I very much appreciate your time. Thank you, Jose, for your time.